Math 31, I just want to take a moment to show you example 7 on your calculator. So we will eventually be able to solve this equation using something called logarithms. Uh, we haven't talked about logarithms in this class before. You might have heard of them in a previous math class. We're getting to them. Um, but before you ever hear about logarithms or how to work with logarithms, you wouldn't know how to solve this by hand. And even if we knew logarithms, we still need the calculator to crunch some numbers for us. So let me show you a kind of cool feature on your calculator that can help you solve this type of equation. So if you want to solve this exponential equation, what you should do is you should put the left side of the equation into y1 and the right side of the equation into y2. And then we're going to let our calculator figure out when they're equal. And the calculator will do that by determining when those graphs intersect. So let's go through the calculator side of this. So go to my y equals. It looks like I had a plot on. Let me clear that out. And I had a regression model in there. So I turned all of my stuff off. All right, so let's put the right side of the equation, which was 4. Oops, not sine. Was 4 into y1. And the right side of my equation was 7.85 times 1.15 raised to the x power, and then I'm going to subtract 2.27. All right, and then, yep, yeah, we got those in there. So let me hit zoom 6. I don't know what my window was previously, so there's zoom 6. And if I look at that graph, or the graph of those two functions, I do see them intersecting right around here. Now, if I had to guess, it looks like it's around an x-coordinate of negative 2. That seems like my guess right now of negative 2. But I don't want to rely on my guess. Um, I want my calculator to figure it out. So let's hit second and trace. That'll call up your calculation menu because the calc is the blue word. Let's go down to option five. All right. Now your calculator is going to prompt you with a bunch of things. It, it's asking you which curves do you want? Which two curves do you want to find the intersection points of? And the reason it's asking you which curves, and just go with me for a moment, you hang tight on this screen, is because Potentially, you could write 10 curves, 10 graphs, into the, your y equals. Now, we only have two in there right now, so the only two that we're going to intersect are y1 and y2. But you could potentially have a bunch in there, and you just need to tell your calculator which two do you want to look for the intersection, or are you looking for intersection points. So let's go back. I'm going to hit second, trace, five. All right, now, first curve. Do I want my first curve to be y1, which is the equation 4? Yes, I do, so I'll hit Enter. And it'll prompt you, do you want y2 to be the second equation, which I do. So your calculator re recognizes that you only have two functions in there. So those are probably the two you want to calculate the intersection of. All right, now, you can guess if you want, or you can just hit Enter. All right, so if I hit Enter, there it is. I had guessed negative 2, so I was a little bit off, but negative 1.608 seems reasonable. So just let me clear this out, and let me just run through this again. I would hit second, trace, option 5, and when you only have the two curves in there, you can hit enter, 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 and there it is. All right. So I'm going to flip back to my paper just so we can write up this answer and finish this section out. I'll see you later. Bye. Hey, Mount 31, before we get out of here, I just want to make sure we're solid on the write-up for example 7. So let's just review what we talked about on that computer or on our calculator. I've got my functions entered into my y equals. I'm going to hit zoom 6, and I'm going to look for an intersection point if it exists. And it looks like the, these functions intersect here, which is about negative 2 if I'm looking in the x direction. So let me hit second, trace. I'll just hit option five and then enter, enter, enter. And you see my calculator give me negative 1.6084. And I just want to be clear on how to write up your answer. All right, we see that x coordinate there. So all I would write is my x coordinate because I've solved for x and I've gone to the thousandth place, that's three decimals in. And that's how we can figure out where those equations, or I should say how to solve this exponential equation graphically, which is much easier than doing it the handwritten way with logarithms. We haven't learned logarithms yet, but those are coming. So that gets us to the end of this section. So I'm hoping now that we're through this section, 
that were more comfortable with graphing exponential functions and we could say something about their traits if we wanted to and that we are also comfortable transforming exponential functions. All right, so with that, we're gonna head into logarithms. Maybe you've heard of them before, maybe you haven't, but we're gonna unpack them in the next section. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.